estamos de regreso y en este vlog vamos a hablar muchísimo de cine. Y hablando justamente de cine, vamos a recordar que en Cine Villamorra, aparte de disfrutar de buenas películas, también podemos disfrutar con nuestros niños del mes más divertido del año. Todos los sábados de 15 a 18 horas te esperamos en familia con dibujos de tus personajes animados favoritos para disfrutar con productos Crayola. Los más divertidos juegos, distintas manualidades y muchas sorpresas más. Cine Villa Morra es tuyo. Y hablando de cine, de la mano de Film Magic hice esta entrevista al director de la película The Night House o La Casa Oscura. Él es David Bragner, ya tiene experiencia en el cine de terror, ya es director hace tiempo, a pesar de que es bastante joven, tiene 43 años aproximadamente, ya hace más de 10 años que está trabajando en la industria del cine de terror. Esta es una película genial, es una película de terror psicológico que también mezcla mucho la tecnología, que habla también de la salud mental con una actuación fantástica de Rebecca Hall. La entrevista fue eh, de audio, así que no vamos a poder verlo a él, pero sí vamos a poder escuchar lo que me comentó en, este, en esta rueda de prensa donde también compartí con otros colegas míos de otras partes de América Latina, pero vamos solamente con la parte donde él me respondió a mí para ustedes estas preguntas. Hi David and welcome to Paraguay. <laughs> Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> Congratulations on the movie. Um, this film has a large technology presence. Although you're young, you already have a lot of experience with horror films. Besides technology, what is the main change you have seen in horror movies lately? Um, I think, you know, I, we've been talking about this a bit lately. I mean, I think there is a recognition with horror audiences, uh, the, the possibility of drama, prestige, metaphor. Um, some people call it elevated, you know, the idea that horror is not a lowbrow experience, that it is, um, it, it's an experience like any other. Um, I think the last 10 years have opened up audiences and, and studios and financiers in a different way. Um, and, and maybe that's contributing to a, a, a moment in horror. Um, I should also say that it's probably because a, a handful of marquee films over the last 10 years have really advanced this and this conversation, but Um, for horror nerds like myself, it, it's always been the case. You know, these movies were always interesting on all these levels, but it's fun that there, it feels like there's more of a conversation about it now than there has ever been. Well, David, what was your initial impression upon receiving the script? I was, uh, well, I was, as a, as a genre director, I was like, oh, this is a haunted house film. It's a gothic romance. It's, um, it's, a, uh, it's a psychological thriller, you know, it's, it deals in geography horror and the changing of spaces as a reflection of the mind. Yeah, I mean, the, the horror geek in me was like, there's so much that can be done here. This would be a very exciting project. But I'll also say that, like, I found aspects of the script, like, truly troubling. And uh, in that they stuck with me. Um, that I felt that the script was withholding things from me, that it had secrets to keep from me. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that, that, that lack of resolution at times um, kept me up at night thinking about it. And uh, I pretty soon realized it's like, that is a reason to make this film and uh, to go there and, and, and embrace the unanswered questions. And um, not that there aren't answers to those questions in the film, um, but that um, I think the ambiguities of it um, breathe a certain life into the material. And that was, um, That was something that I, I wanted to embrace. Thank you. De la mano de Film Magic, muy pronto podremos disfrutar de esta película también de terror. Candyman, de este director fantástico que ya nos trajo películas muy buenas como nosotros, también como Uy, estoy hablando de Jordan Peele. Él escribió esta película también con Nia Da Costa. Aparte, Jordan fue el productor de la película, además de haber escrito el guión. Vamos a adentrarnos en el mundo de Candyman, una mirada al interior de la película de la mano de Universe. Pictures. I've always been fascinated with urban legends. Candyman is the patron saint of the urban legend. You guys want to hear a scary story? No. Candyman was a real sort of urban legend when I was growing up. It wasn't just attached to the movie. For us, Candyman was some demon ghost man killing people in the projects. Say his name. 
I dare you. We didn't have a black Freddy. We didn't have a black Jason. It felt important that this candy man be told from a black perspective. Something's happening to me. Candyman is so perennial. We're talking about the cycles of violence and how history repeats itself and how we collectively process trauma through stories. It's always a time to tell a story like Candyman, which is the big tragedy of the tale in the first place. porque este es un cine de superhéroes. La directora es Chloe Zhao, quien llevó varios premios por su anterior película, Nomadland, muy diferente a lo que es Eternals de Marvel. Ya durante la semana conocimos este avance lleno de estrellas de Hollywood. Vamos entonces al material. Five years ago, Thanos erased half of the population of the universe. But the people of this planet brought everyone back with a snap of a finger. The sudden return of the population provided the necessary energy for the emergence to begin. How long do we have? Seven days. We're Eternals. We came here 7,000 years ago to protect humans from the deviants. Why didn't you guys help fight Thanos? Or any war, all the other terrible things throughout history? We were instructed not to interfere in any human conflicts unless deviants are involved. By who? We need to find the others. I haven't seen some of them for centuries. Hi. Hello. This is what the end of the world looks like. Needs to be a front row seat. You know what's never saved the planet? Your sarcasm. We have loved these people since the day we arrived. When you love something, you protect it. Perfect safe house. Well, what's this even made of? Vibranium. Fall collection. IKEA. Si hay algo que a mí por lo menos me encanta es el cine basado en hechos reales porque nos da la posibilidad de conocer historias que ocurrieron en la vida real como es el caso de la historia de esta gran, gran reina del soul, Aretha Franklin. Vamos a conocer también más de su historia con esta película El origen de Respect es lo que tenemos a continuación de la mano de Universal Pictures y Filmatic. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, baby. Just a little bit. 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 Just a little bit.
almost 3 a.m. We're writing a hit song. It's Otis Redding's song. Just a little bit. <laughs> Ahora hacemos una breve pausa y en la vuelta tenemos un viajecito de vuelta virtual a la Argentina.